Hello. It's the end of September, the last weekend. I have had a few week absence from YouTube. I've been busy. One of the things I've been busy doing is coming to this park and walking. My son is working a lot and I have been coming to take care of his pets in the middle of the day. I don't have the dog with me right now as we walk through this park, but we come to this park every day and walk. There are still a lot of green leaves on the trees. That little tree right there has got the slightest hint of red. They're starting to turn, and our weather has certainly turned far less humid. in the past couple days. Straight ahead, well off to the left is the little water, the splash pad that they have at this park. And then straight ahead is a new playscape that they have been building. The construction workers are not here today because it's Saturday. We have some leaves on the ground. There's a little squirrel. But as I come here daily with the dog, it has been very interesting to watch the progress of this new play area. It is an inclusive playground that is going to be wheelchair accessible. And it's huge. It's very interesting. I'm impressed with how tall that slide is. And that those little cars are interesting. I don't know what this is going to... How it's going to look in the end. My son's dog is always curious to see what the construction workers have eaten for lunch too. Maybe they have thrown <laughs> their garbage down, which they don't. But I have an issue with that dog finding wrappers and whatnot and eating. We'll take a walk in the neighborhood in a minute. There's the neighborhood there. But I want to show you the I guess, architect rendition of what this park will look like when it's done. I can't wait. It's, it's going to be very cool. And I have such respect with for these construction workers that can build these things because see that dirt pile right there? I think that if I were left in charge of building things for kids to play on, it would be that dirt pile. Here's more of the playscape. Another life change that we've had is that my husband, as he winds down his career, he only has about three months left of work, but his job decided to put him on midnights, which he had to do in order to keep his job. It's been interesting. It's been a big life change at our middle age to have to deal with, but we're doing very well, I have to say. Up ahead is the forest playscape that I can take the dog on if there are no kids around, which is rare. But it does happen. There were no kids around today. I mean, it's a very cool setup. It's got a forest theme. 
And Nimbus, my son's dog, was so scared to go way up high at first, but he has overcome all his fears, and we climb all over the playscape when we can. Isn't that cool how it has that, those trees up top? And then all these little activities that are forest and animal themed, these things to climb on that are made to look like logs. It's really cute. Now this thing, I see kids on it, this twirly thing, and, and it, it seems kind of, it, these kids can get going, moving fast on it. They hang off of it and they sit on top of it. In the wrong hands, that could be very dangerous. It's quite high. I just think of my cousins and my brother and me playing on things as kids and how dangerous we, they could make everything, especially merry-go-rounds, which they don't have anymore. I think they've taken them all out of the parks around me, but that thing that kids can play on there, that seems just as dangerous as a merry-go-round. We're going to take a little stroll in the neighborhood pretty soon. And I will give a little backstory of why my son lives here. Years ago, about in 2018, my son and two friends lived in this neighborhood and they rented a house. This neighborhood's a couple miles from my neighborhood. It's in the same city. When they were renting this house though, they would go pay their rent to a management company and my son let it slip one day, not that it was any big secret, this house right there to the right, I almost bought that little brick house. I ended up buying another brick house down here, but that's one of the ones I almost bought. My son let it slip that the people that owned his house live in Australia. I found this fascinating that somebody from another country could own a house here and then rent it out to people. But I know more now. I never realized that was such a thing back then. And I got it in my head that since they paid their rent on time, that I would become their landlord and I would find a house down here buy it, and it would be an investment. People have put up their um, Halloween decorations. Oh, that's pretty, isn't it? And I, I did just that. In 2019, I found a house down here, and we bought it. And I was a landlord for a little while. And things were okay, and then COVID hit. And two of the tenants worked, um, well, including my son, I should say. So three of the tenants, they all worked in industries that um, he had to do with either working in bars, entertainment, or the nightlife. And all of their income stopped until they got unemployment. Here's another Halloween house. And they did eventually, but we had a few months of, they couldn't pay rent. And I, I found out very quickly that I am not, I'm too much of a pushover to be a landlord. <laughs> we got through it. Oh, look at him, he's spooky. My, my grandfather owned a home like these a bungalow house for for many years and he was a landlord but reflecting back 
the only people I can ever remember living in that house were family members. And I'm not really sure that they ever paid, to be honest with you. My grandpa had eight kids and then a lot of grandkids. And people would go through life changes, a, a, a job loss or a divorce, and people would end up living there, my father included. I will show you another house that I almost bought. And it's on a very cute little street down here. It's a short street. And, well, for example, the bungalow house that I bought is from the 40s. I believe that's when most of this neighborhood was built. People probably mainly worked for Ford. They are all about the same size, but not this street that we're about to go on. These homes are, they might be classified as maybe tiny homes, and they were built in the 20s and the 30s. They're older than most of the other houses in the neighborhood. And they're very interesting little structures. Hardly any of them are brick. I don't think any of them are. I think they were all originally wood and then people have sided them. But the peaks are interesting on them. I, I love them. Some of them people have bought and have really made improvements to. Some maybe not so much. The house that I almost bought, we're getting to it. And it was actually, it's actually a four bedroom house. And I had three male, single male tenants. So it was going to work out fine in that regard. However, the bathroom setup was not going to work out. Look at these. These squirrels were having a party with this, these people's pumpkins. <laughs> I think they're tearing them apart. But anyway, the, but the bathroom, where is the house I'm in? It's not that house. It's coming. It was a very cute little house. It's this one. It was that one. The kitchen is actually huge in that house. That house has four bedrooms, two on each side. The living room's in the middle, but one bathroom. And it was adjoining two bedrooms. So you would have to walk through a bedroom to get to the bathroom and two bedrooms had a door to that bathroom, the only bathroom in the house. It was going to be not ideal on top of the fact that I was a little nervous with me solely owning a 100-year-old house or a soon-to-be 100 year old house it's, it's, look at the peak on that one I, lo I love these little houses but I just thought that it was going to probably be an issue I ended up now owning an 80 year old house but <laughs> I don't know here's Jack Skellington people started putting up Halloween decorations in this neighborhood that I'm currently walking in, I would say around Labor Day. And now that it's the end of September, they're really starting to put them up a lot. I'm fascinated with this empty lot. 
here's another pretty house. Not spooky, but decorated very pretty for Halloween. Mm -hmm. uh, as is this one. The mums are so pretty and cheerful with their fall colors. And there's the park. And some more spooky decorations. A spider web. And what do we have there? Some pumpkins and a spooky witch. <laughs> 